I brought another koan. I've been reading these recently and enjoying them. And, you know, as these things do, they, they speak to me where I am in the moment. So some of them, if I read them, you know, in March, would hit me differently from if, they, if I read it in August or if I read it in December. And today I want to read case 14 from Dogen's Mana Shobo Genzo. It's short. Yangshan once asked his teacher, Zen master Guishan Lingyo of Mount Gui, how is it when millions of objects emerge all at once? Guishan said, blue is not yellow. Long is not short. All things abide in their own positions. It does not concern me. And to that, Yangshan bowed. So again, someone goes to a teacher. It's always someone going to a teacher. And Yangshan goes to Guishan and he says, how is it when millions of objects emerge all at once? And this sounds so amazing. <laughs> but it's just now. Millions of objects are emerging now. They just did it and they're doing it again. And they'll do it again in a minute. This arising is not special. This arising is our basic state. It's our basic reality. It's our fundamental condition. But instead of saying, how is it now? Instead of saying, how is it like this? He points to it from a different angle. To the fact that in this moment, which we might speak of as one thing, there are all the things within it. There are all the parts. How do they relate? What is this? And Guishan says, Blue is not yellow. Long is not short. All things abide in their own positions. This is a Dharma position. We've talked about this before. That everything, be it something you can see, something you can remember, something you can imagine, something you can smell, everything that can be named, everything that can be sensed, exists where it is, how it is, as what it is in its Dharma position. Not separate, but distinct. And then Guishan says, he says, blue is not yellow, long is not short. All things abide in their positions. And then he says, it does not concern me. And someone very kindly pointed out to me that a different translation of this by Gudo Nishijima because subjects and objects can be vague, translates this as, they are not interested in us. The million things are not interested in us. So interesting. So we can take this experience of the world from this subjective place or from the object's subjective place. And in either reading, there's no concern. That there are a million things arising is not of concern. That things are what they are, but not something else is not of concern. And to this, what could Yangshan say? He just bowed.
Now, why am I interested in this encounter today? I'm interested in this encounter today because we just finished building this building, this temple, which is the culmination for me of a dream of 20 years. So much thought and so much effort, so many roadblocks have gone into the building of this building that we're all sitting in together for the first time. There has been so much evolution of the shape of this building. How I imagined it 20 years ago, how I imagined it 10 years ago, how I imagined it a year ago, and what it is now. This koan, this encounter speaks to me because every bone in my body wants to attribute meaning to this. I want to look in, in this room. I want to look outside. It's beautiful outside. And I want to say this means this about my life. It means this about this community. It means this about Zen in Canada. It means this about the Dharma. It's important because it feels important. And so this koan speaks to me because this koan slaps me in the face. Yangshan says, all this is happening. Look at what is happening. And Guishan says, yeah. So things are what they are. And they're not something else. It's no big deal. We live in a neighborhood where in the last few years, especially during the pandemic, a lot of houses have gone up for sale because the real estate market went crazy. And it's a, a, a really complex neighborhood because there are some really fancy houses next to some, some really run down houses and we see the for sale signs. And, and then the next day we see that the for sale signs are gone when we take a walk. And sometimes the curiosity just, just gets us and we go home and we look it up and we try to figure out how much did that house sell for? What was the value of that house? And we can see the number because we live in this magical age where we can know anything we want immediately. And then the next night we go for a walk and we see that house. But then in addition to all the things we've already attributed to that house, this is a beautiful house. This is an ugly house. That porch is ridiculous. That, that garage is amazing. Now we have a number. We put a number on it. And every single time we see the house, we see the number superimposed on top. As if that house needed anything added as if that house wasn't already a kind of biome holding all these organisms and these lives that have passed through it, that have lived in the beds and lived in the walls, as if it hasn't creaked in the wind for 50 years. I come along and I say, it's worth this. stupid but it's human because the million things arising at once it feels like too much how can i possibly hold the million things how can i comprehend the million things and so yang shan goes to his teacher right because it's overwhelming to consider the scale of this moment and the next moment and the next moment he says, how do I make sense of this? 
And Grishan says, you leave it alone. We want to make it small. We want to make it make sense. We want to give it categories and names so that we know that this is this and we know that this means this. If we do that one thing at a time, we feel like some part of this is within our control, like some part of this can be held. And Guishan says, no. If you really want to hold this, stop making that effort. Long is not short. Blue is not yellow. And this temple is complete. Without my story about it, just as each of you is complete without your story about who you are. Just as your life is complete without trying to fit it into some sort of box that makes sense. These are the moments when I feel so grateful for this tradition, so grateful for these teachings, because they catch me right where I am. Trying to hold something, trying to control something, and over and over and over again, they say, hey, you can put that down. It's okay. It's okay just like that. And so tonight, sitting here in this room and sitting here with all of you, I want to let this all just simply reveal itself. without getting stuck in a narrative, without turning it into a poem or a moment. Here we are. We're not somewhere else. That's incredible. And that's where I'll stop.